And I was on a man. But what? You think we're talking about Sandler? We're talking about Kenny Loggins. I thought, I thought, I thought what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> we're punchy. We're in a bunker. Dots? Um, somewhere. Dots, anyone? You can't have sugar. A window. What are you eating now? Paper? These are dots, guys. Jesus. Remember these? Low you were blood. a kid? No, is that sugar? Yeah, I only had one, that one. Mm. Uh, Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins. What a stud, dude. By the way, I saw Loggins Messina, Day on the Green. Uh, What's that? Uh, Angry Eyes. Remember that lick? I don't think I do. You know? Anyway, this was a really fun podcast for me personally because I love music and I love musicians. And Kenny Loggins can really, he's... He's one, he, like in high school, he mm. wrote, he just sat down with the guitar. He's one of those savants. I mean, he's somebody who just knew how to sing and play guitar at a very early age. His, and his, uh, we really talk about his songwriting prowess and how he, how he comes up with songs. I it, mean, we, he sat right here. Remember, he came over. Uh, he sat mm -hmm. here. We had a blast. Looks the same. He's a stud. Talk about how super famous he got there. Stadiums mm -hmm. and just, uh, you know, he's obviously uh, such a big songwriter Loggins and Messina, just Kenny Loggins. Yeah. Hit songs in hit movies. Soundtracks. He, that was he, big, big money. Yeah. I um, mean, Footloose. I mean, Footloose. come on. And many, many others. I mean, uh, his song in, um, what's the Tom Top Cruise? Gun? Top Gun. That they wanted, he wanted to redo it. And they said, no, we want the exact same song. Oh, we, you know, we had a big controversy because uh, A, I sang him Fruit Loops parody of, uh, of, uh, you know, Footloose. And I couldn't remember the goddamn comedian that did it, but I was doing the other comedian's bit, but singing it to Kenny Loggins was a blast. And he hadn't heard it and he thought it was funny. <laughs> and then uh, and then on Top Gun, I always thought until the day I saw him, it was, I went to the danger zone and it's highway. And we get in a big argument because I said, highway there's not the a danger. highway in the sky. I don't even understand what you're talking about. Highway so, to the danger zone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Way to the danger zone. Oh. I said, that makes no sense. That song shouldn't have worked. So we fought about that. <laughs> got very tense. I know. Ed, look, um, was it going to get physical? I, did, I never thought it went to that level. Mm -mm. He stood up. We cut tape. <laughs> but it, uh, this, you don't need to know this stuff. This is behind the scenes. No, anyway, by the end, we were tease. friends. But put it this way. Kenny Logg is one of those people in the last long time, maybe 50 years, has been a huge part of American music. You don't even realize how much he's done. Yeah. Wall to wall hits. And he's he's still out there touring. He looks great. I mean, he's like, he's Kenny Loggins. He's a rock star. So uh, I found this really, really interesting. <laughs> mm. Cue to the audience. <laughs> it was great. And uh, it made me realize how boring I was. Because when I was hearing about his hits, and he was playing the Hollywood Bowl right after that, we couldn't go. And, mm -hmm. but anyway, he was- Because we a, couldn't find it. I drove over there and I went <laughs> round and round. I couldn't find the Hollywood Bowl. I just started rolling down my window and went, Kenny! Couldn't Kenneth. <laughs> Sometimes he answers the. But Kenneth. remember, and toward the end, he handed you a ukulele, and you played a beautiful. I um, said, "Love the world who holds the world in a paper cup." Hey, guess what? What song does that go? Paper cup. That's called paper cup. No, Same Danny song. song. Danny song. And even though I don't have money, I'm so in love. Now you know why I'm a comedian. <laughs> hey, Jesus. Guess what? Newsflash. We don't. We can cut this. What was the first big badass song? Globally, we're talking about the 19th century. Yeah, that was like heavy metal in those days. Uh -huh. Oh, that's the that's the only row, clue. row, row your boat gently down the stream. I'm not kidding. This was a heavy metal, huge global hit. Gently, gently, gently. Yeah, life, life is, is but, but a dream. dream. That was very like, edgy. <laughs> that was like Metallica in 1860. Stop! I don't want to hear it. Let's look at a clip. Uh, okay. Anyway. Well, um, now we we, just, that's the only one we might actually cut. No, I'm kidding. No, I just need a second. Hold on. You gotta take that? Kenny? Yeah, yeah, we just did the thing. No, no, Spade's cool with you. It's fine. We talked about Danger Zone, Highway to Danger Zone. <laughs> All right, next time you're at the bowl, hit me up. Okay, buddy. All right, let's throw that, to it. That was your mom. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? People smile, tell me I'm lucky one. That's a great song. You know that song, Heather? And even though we ain't got money, I'm so in love with you, honey. Didn't we sing that to his face? Did he write that or not? Oh, he wrote it. Someone else did it. Oh, he wrote oh, it. He wrote right. it. He wrote the oh, he fucking lived shit it, out of it. <laughs> okay, here's how this one goes. <clears throat> yeah, you do it. Pa, 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 pa. Ah. 
Darren, I go, give me a little Darren, a Darren, a Darren, a Darren, a Darren. And he's like, God <laughs> damn. <laughs> That's the beginning. I know. <laughs> Darren, Darren, Darren. Even though we I didn't got sh- money. We did a corporate I'm so too. low with you, honey. People smile and tell me I'm a lucky one. Life's just begun. I think I'm going to have a son. He will be like you and me, as free as a dove. This is the hard part. No. Conceived in love. Sun is going to shine above. Here's the hard part. Even though we ain't got money. <laughs> oh, my God. He's good. What the fuck? Damn it. I'm this is so like... in love with you, honey, with me, with me. A heat, a ha, we won't. Head of A&M. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take your chair. Meet... I'll call you later, A&M Records. <laughs> I think I have someone you might want to meet. They ran out of film about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. Oh, can't wait to get to this grilling. Okay, I want to start with that song parody thing. Yeah, I no, say, I want. I want. I want to say one thing. Yeah, uh, this year, you're on. That no, so you had on. was. Um, I finally saw. It was about a year ago. I saw your audition reel for Saturday Night Live. Oh, oh, I haven't even seen that it. tape. Is fantastic. Thank tape. you. It was a tape when I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, how have we not seen these for this whole time? I've never seen it. I. They're coming out with so many things that I've never seen in my life. Rehearsals. It's on YouTube. Well, anything they tape, they can they can sell. I mean, I guess back then, but they held it for so long because mm. I just saw a video, a rough video, Dana, of Thursdays doing promos. You know, they do promo with you. You would be in it. Well, they keep uh, releasing them. And you do it with the host, the music, and then maybe one of the mm. cast members. And I would write those. That was sort of my jury duty mm. when I got there. And so you get to meet people like you and those. Yeah. And so it mm-hmm. was me, Lauren's up there, Lauren. sort of monitoring. <laughs> the first Lauren impression came early. Uh, and then uh, and then it was Amelia Westvez was the host, Pearl Jam was the band. And so mm, I'm nice. explaining how to, re- you know, this is what you say, is what you say. And then I step back. They don't just show the promo. Step back and watch. And Lauren watches. They try it. And then they go, cut. But still rolls, and they go. When they when you say they try it, you mean not the actual actors. Though. No, the actual actors are really taping it to oh, record okay. it. Take but after they keep, take. It had to be exactly thirty seconds. That was no, important. no, it had to be like uh, what? Like nine? Yeah, it oh, was very hard. Oh, really fast ones. Oh, yeah. You had okay. to put the host, the music name, and then you had to do a joke. Hi, I'm Milo Estevez. So that's online. And now. this is okay. uh, I'm hosting with Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam, and then we have four then seconds some for kind a joke. Of joke. And so I had to write like 12 of those jokes every week for a host. And uh, That's quite an exercise. Yeah. Did you do promos when you were there? You had to do that on Thursday probably. Uh, no. I, and back when I did it, we didn't do promos. Oh, the, for real? The musical real? act didn't do that. Who was your host? Do you remember? You don't have to. Okay. <laughs> Not wish one bit it's of only research. only five in 1982. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was a, I'm going to guess it was the a host fuzzy was... Area. was uh, I don't know. Mary Taylor Moore? <laughs> no. <laughs> 82. Not that far back. <laughs> 82. She also, I was, when I was, was there. graduating yeah. high school. 82, you were doing. I was graduating uh, Saguaro High School in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I was that was right yeah. in the pocket of me loving SNL for sure. Yeah, me too. Because high school is like when me you too. Crazy. Okay, I just had people a, think that when when I do those movies, then you know, do you hang out with Bill Murray and do you, you know, oh, right. you know all that with like right. Caddyshack you're on the set and stuff all like day. that? Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> would you, and I, you never meet the music's the last thing they do. Yeah, you never meet the actors are on to their next or, or next next movie. The yeah, band, the band is always the badass. I mean, look, if we were talented like you, yeah. I would have gone into music. That we all wanted to do what you did. Jealous of singers. this was our fallback. I was in a little band. I had a Hardy Boys uh, book was my snare, and I would kick a little. Oh. Hamper and Tragic. my brother had a one string. How guitar. old were you when you? I did? was two and a half. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, I was like uh, seven or eight. But rock stars. But what I want to ask you, I just had a flight of fancy because this song, da- Danny song, which is really super iconic. Even if you haven't heard in a while, it's like the chorus, like even though we ain't got money, I'm still in love with you, honey. Do you think that still rings true to you? <laughs> you, you just reminded me. I I did Gilbert Godfrey's show. You about did two years ago. Oh. And we yeah. sang Danny's song together. Oh, oh really? Oh, Did he change the lyrics? I know, I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, was, it was so funny. You but know. it's very romantic and very youthful because, uh-huh. you know, in modern society, it's like, even though you're out of cash, I'm leaving real fast. And, you know, yeah, that kind right? of, but that's that young, youthful. Even you know, though you that don't kind have of in high Instagram school, right? followers, I'm still Yeah, in high school. High school. Se- senior in high school. You sat down with a guitar. 
Yeah, my my brother, brother wrote was me a letter a about you mm-hmm. know having a baby and yeah. whooping, and so that's why it's called Danny's song because yeah. it was taken from Danny's letter. Some of the lines in the song are actually I know one of them. Know. But what was your first chord? Pisces Virgo Rising was very a very good, good sign. sign. Strong and kind. But the melody, I mean, how do you you start with the You G? know the album version, see, so yeah, that never made the single version. Jeez. Oh, really? Yeah. You researched it. Oh, really? That's such a great line. Yeah. I and don't know why. Never got high, right? They weren't going to play that on the radio. I never got. Oh, boy, I was a lucky guy, is that what you say? Yeah. yeah. Boy, I was a sorry guy? What was it? No. Boy, I was a sorry guy. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, that had, song it, was a tearjerker. Well, people well, adopted it, you know. Hard oh, to get a, a hook the, like that. The funniest part for me is playing benefit concerts where it's, you know, $10,000 a plate. <laughs> yeah. And they're singing, you know, even though we ain't got money. All the audience <laughs> is singing like, <laughs> was exactly. there ever a time you didn't have money? <laughs> even though we're trying to recall. I was at a Catholic money. church once and the priest was going, we, you know, in the name of the Lord, we all need money. And the whole church was there. And then I saw Jeff Bezos going up and getting communion. I thought, well. This guy could help out. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, know, maybe he did buy the church. Yeah. He buys everything he can see. Anyway, but that song is amazing because I'm always fascinated by someone who can come up with a, a hook, a melodic hook like that. You're just strumming and then that comes to you, right? And or, some some people are better at it than others. Well, and, you're and kind of one of the best. <laughs> and, but it just it's just a thing that was there right from the very beginning. You had it. Then yeah. I knew what a hook was. And, and what was your guitar? I'm sorry, this is Maybe too technical. Inside, we don't really need no, him. We, we don't, don't really need him at all. Take it over. I can see. Because you talk a lot about in your book how you got the new better with machine. the guitar <laughs> o- over time. And yeah. how proficient were you on the guitar? How many chords did you know when you when you wrote Danny's song as a kid? Sitting I in your think bedroom? I used all the chords I knew on that it's song. like five? <laughs> <You're right. laughs> did you do bar yeah. chords? Um not at first. Nobody does. <laughs> you know? Anyway, that's, that's the last David, thing you want to You can learn. have the next question. We, we tag team today. Speaking of bar chords, okay. you're from Alhambra, California, which uh-huh. I've only heard about that city on traffic No reports. human being really knows where it is. If you know where Pasadena is. Yes. But Alhambra, you're like, Alhambra, where is are that? Are you thinking of Altadena? Well, Altadena is there too. We played we played mm. sports against these mm-hmm. towns. I hear that on weather reports. Uh, okay, so you ask, tell him he's got that rock star life. That's that's really Dana's big. Well, takeaway. I just yeah, I love I love the very end of your book uh, be- because you kind of sum it up saying I, you don't really want to be Kenny Loggins anymore in a sense. But we never had your fame or were a rock star, mm. and that is a motherfucker. Well, you're, you're kind of a rock star in your world. Uh, well, thank you. I was hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah. I take back everything I said. <laughs> right. But you and, is, and, you know, I was just thinking the ride of that. And when you become that famous and you were a full-blown sex symbol, right? I mean. Still am. Well, of course you are now. The ladies must I'm go a, crazy. I'm, I deal with you every day. You are finally, <laughs> finally preserved and very handsome. Yeah. But in the 70s and 80s, that's just heady stuff. Do you have a question, Dave? My, my question is, <laughs> is, I think- I was waiting for your question. There's yeah. no question. He I'm just defining you. Okay. But that must have been amazing. But go well, ahead, I Dave. think his fame, uh, sort of, I, I'm not relating you to me at all. You're a huge fucking rock star, which, but when I got fame, it, it was a little easier to deal with because it was so incremental. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, got on like, mm-hmm. locally in town, I was doing stand-up. And then some people knew me there. So that was a little weird. And then- and then I got right. on like an HBO Young Comedian special. Then a little more people, SNL, but didn't do much. Then I got a part in a movie, but it wasn't the starring yeah. role. So over time, people started to know me, but it took yeah. 10 years, You got years, famous years. at 51. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He was a rock star. But you did like, it was 21, right? Basically 22. 21, That yeah. first- my, uh, well, my after, oldest son says, Dad, that fucked you up right from the very beginning. Is that beginning. what I, And what did you mean by that? <laughs> well, you you miss out on the parts on of life, life that you right. should be learning about. Right. Because it's all And writing genocide. about. Because then you're writing, you're not uh, yeah. anonymous anymore. And you're not walking around uh, absorbing life and getting a real reaction about the real world. Yeah. The real world evolves. Yeah. You know, I never had to learn how to cook for myself. Yeah. It was one of the things I wished that I would have gone through that phase mm-hmm. of getting more friendly with the kitchen. Yeah. How do you cook now? I mean, do you have... <laughs> I asked Lisa oh, yeah. to cook. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa cooks. Um, so, you know, I felt like the, when I felt famous for the first time in my 30s, that I, to certain people, I became an idea or a concept, you know, mm-hmm. um, especially just 
getting wealth to? Like, when did wealth come in for you? Like, real wealth. When did you first make a million dollars? That was right out, right, very right close to the beginning. Yeah, really? so you got was full. It, Danny's song? So it, it was the opposite of your story. We, I was trying to say we, we had the same the story, and then I started to back out of it. Yeah, we uh, Loggins from Cena played the troubadour <laughs> as the opening act for Curtis Mayfield. Okay, and then mm-hmm. two weeks later, I think it was they brought us back as headliners because I guess the headliners dropped out and Weston needed somebody in a hurry. Yeah. So they pulled us back in. So it looked like the rise to that oh, kind of thing. Oh, back then but that was a huge deal. FM radio was still a, a new concept. Mm-hmm. And, FM was, oh my oh, yeah. God. Yeah. And so, huge. And so they adopted the Loggins and Messina record because we had these seven minute tracks where they could go out back and get stone and then come back in and, and was, What playing. was on that first album? The first that the, got hit, the, Angry That Eyes? was Sitting In. Angry Eyes was the second, second album. album. But what were the but hits off that Sitting In album? Sitting In had, had Danny's song. Oh, which, Danny's song. And Murray yeah. covered before we got to it. Mm-hmm. And it had- And uh, Murray of all people. Believe yeah. in me? Is that what she sings? Believe no, in me. No. Well, uh, I can't Danny believe song. it. But she, she did Danny's song, but she also- She, she was it. her own star. Oh, yeah. And then you, you sort of gave that to her or just said, do you want to cover I it? I gave it to her, yeah. She was uh, with- uh, I had a friend and and- that was her her friend her friend, so I met her through her friend. So you still get checks yeah. today from Ann Murray's cover, and then you get checks for then your you own. Did, you did your research, didn't you? Yeah, well, I, I'm into royalties <laughs> and money. <laughs> money. I want to know your net worth, yeah. but I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> but, uh, so anyway, just to put that in context, I'll be like Howard Stern. You're 21, 22. Mm-hmm. You've got a huge hit album. You're getting famous. Girls love you. You're getting really wealthy. Then what happens? <laughs> you do more of it then what <laughs> more girls well more. in those days you know uh, I didn't have a girlfriend or a wife or anything no family so you know 21 years old you mean I would go on the road for 300 days a year good God. I mean, we just lived out there because there was nobody oh. at home the was day you get bus? famous do they deliver cocaine to your house or do you have to go buy it or how do your that? underwear is made of cocaine <laughs> <laughs> and then you use it you, you have, gradually just take you have a vending machine at every gig and the, yeah and so 300 right. days but you were you young. got it figured out <laughs> yeah that's what i asked for <laughs> wow is that on a bus or are you flying commercial or i mean that's just well, some, it's both on the east yeah. coast you'll tend to bus because the the venues the, are closer, closer together yeah. on the west coast you usually fly and the, they start to grow exponentially like it was you know, to theaters or 3,000 Well, we started on a college tour. So we played yeah. the yeah, gyms. that's what we did. Gymnasiums. Yep, college, and, then, yeah. and then that grows out to real venues. The word gets well, what around are, What a size bit. would be the real ones? Because I don't know if we really got past that Well, <laughs> things happen pretty quick. So yeah. we probably did a short bit of what they call performer arts centers, which are 2,500 people. Mm-hmm. And then we were suddenly in, in outdoor, you know, venues. Yeah. I remember a show we played in, I think it was Oakland. Well, I obviously don't remember that show. Paramount Theater? And it was, uh, opening act was Peter Frampton, then Fleetwood Mac. Jesus. Stevie and Lindsay had just joined the band, so that hadn't caught on yet. And then us, and then Rod Stewart. And I told the the balloon story in the book about- God damn. When when you walked off stage- Jimmy bribing the kid holding Rod Stewart's balloons to, (laughs) he gave him 50 bucks and said, let him go now. (laughs) (laughs) so uh, hundreds of balloons take off for our encore did you guys like with comedians it's always a pecking order like if there's comedians your opening act tries to blow you away even though he's your friend if you're the headliner the middle tries to dominate you do you like to follow that motherfucker rod stewart or did you feel that then or you're just where were you in that lineup we were third third but you followed fleetwood mac followed fleetwood mac they were pretty good were they? <laughs> they were okay. What happened to them? Yeah, I don't I know. I mean, I'm still jealous that you even knew Stevie Nicks and also rang her up to do a song, which is she uh, was a, yeah, which is a, such a great well, song. Well, you know, because I was their opening act for the better part of a year. Uh-huh. They opened for Loggins and Messina when they started, and then we op- then I opened for them when I went solo. And it was really the the duet with Stevie that launched my solo career on the radio. Uh, the the well, amount of monster. people that 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 era that you touch you you've worked with and interacted with is yeah. extraordinary. Had we known <laughs> yeah. so uh, we were iconic. You should have tried to manage Fleetwood Mac or something. You know? Yeah, really. I'm new to this, but I You were asked to manage it. somebody though, right? What's that? You were asked to manage someone? No. Yeah. Dana, nice try. <laughs> Save that David, joke for- let me do No, I thought, I thought you said in the book- that's, that, None of that's true. Just put no, I swear to God, I thought he said- and you kicked him to your manager, or they asked you who's a good manager. And oh, said, well, that was uh, Michael Jackson. See, Dana? My oh, here, a little but fella you don't named listen. Michael a, Jackson. A little guy. A little guy. I wrote down something because I, I was listening to some of your stuff. 
I and listened to five, four this morning, four years old. I was listening last on my iPod without knowing this was coming up. They're already on. No bullshit. Cool. This phony over here. This guy's a showbiz phony. I'm oh, totally look for at these real. Notes. He gets competitive sometimes, mm-hmm. but he's he's good. You David know, might be helpful to give your notes to the people watching and. And they can just they can <laughs> we pick have the a best crowd questions. in here today. No, I have great questions. Oh, what Nitty Gritty Dirt Band I love, and that was early on, right? Yeah. You wrote songs for them? Mm-hmm. Well, no, I wrote I wrote a couple songs for them. Yeah, wrote songs for them, great. Not actually for them, but I had these songs that I was playing. We go to parties, different parties around town, and there'd always be like five or six musicians with their guitars. And we'd just sit around in a circle and we'd take turns playing songs. <laughs> oh my God. Is, and they, and and they so would say, we want that one? Two of the guys from the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band were in the circle. So they would do songs that they knew. And then they came to me after this whole thing and said, that one you did about the bear, we want to do that one. And can you come up to wow, Little like Canyon and sing sing your stuff for John McEwen? So and, when you started doing your thing, cool. did people get kind of quiet then? Oh, wait, wait, Kenny, Kenny's got something. No. I mean, so you, but no, you were no. a songwriter. It's so valuable for a band to have a guy come in and write to their style. And just have a, you know, you, they yeah. recognized the style I was writing and was the style they were recording it. I just wanted to insert this because it really made me laugh. But in 1969, you were in a band called the New Improved Electric Prunes. Well, Is that real? <laughs> I don't know about Wicom- the new improved part. But <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was on I Wikipedia. <laughs> the new improved electric prunes. No. Are they no. around anymore? No. There was an electric prunes that did I Had Too Much to Dream Last Night and a couple other hit records. And, and of course, they got in a fight and the lead singer left. Mm-hmm. And so they needed a couple new people in the band. And so I got uh-huh. a call from my friend who was hired to do the new music direction. Mm-hmm. And I was going to Pasadena City College. And he called me and said, you want to go on the road? And I said, yeah. And you were a teenager, basically. Well, we're, yeah. We're close. I was 19. I was 19. Anyway, yeah. I was just leaping ahead here, stylistically. Yeah. This is it, hearing that song. Mm-hmm. And yeah. your voice on that thing is supernatural. And it really reminded me, or it was sort of a, a similar style to uh, Michael Jackson, that you could oh, reach really? these notes. I, I don't. Oh. Did, did people talk about your vocal performance on that song in specific? You had so many, but I was just kind of blown away by how you hit that. Thank you. Yeah, no, uh, that I'm still struck. The problem with all that is that recording in the '80s, everything was up yeah. there, and you could we're do all it. Though. Competing with foreigner, yeah. So foreigner, I yeah. love next it. Thing it's you know, all kind we're of all up in the whisper. stratosphere. Yeah, but so, you could hit those notes. Uh, yeah, it, it was something. Yeah, it was doable, mm-hmm. not necessarily healthy. Not sustainable. You know, for your, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like taking all that on the road now, it's sometimes I have to drop a key here and there. Now, mm-hmm. I'm going to say this no. is it. Now, Dana, I'm going okay. out on a limb because Go on a limb. I might be confusing these. No. Was it about dad had was went to the hospital with a heart attack? Yeah, yeah, okay. that was. And li- you were putting together the song and then you sort of, that song wrote itself where you go, "It's this is where it's headed. This is. Yeah, well, the intro that I use in concert, okay, okay. is that. Um, when Mike and that was the second song that Michael and I wrote together, Michael McDonald, Dana. <laughs> what? A, yeah, he's good. He's no, Michael Jackson because I knew you were thinking Michael. Yeah, I was thinking Michael Jackson. <laughs> and, <laughs> Michael McDonald's another unreal. Yeah. yeah, singer. Go ahead. And um, the first one we wrote together was "What a Fool Believes." Oh, and then we waited about at least a That's... year before we wrote a second song because the, the fool won a Grammy and it was oh, like, it's, oh, it's too, it's you know, too hard to follow. Most people with intelligence would go, well, we should write 12 more songs. Yeah. But we were intimidated by the success of the songs. So we kind of who, who avoided each that? other. Did you produce it together? Um, what a fool believes because it no, goes that so, was Teddy Templeman. So the, elemental do, and almost cartoony <laughs> and that hook. And the, do, 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 like, yeah. Are there any words? It's or like, I've never go. heard a hook like that. <laughs> Those are the original <laughs> words, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Just, just to make just it like something words. and then you fill it in? Hey, yeah. Did you say you walked in and he was playing the beginning of that? Yeah. it was. I was standing outside his living room. The door was ajar. And, mm-hmm. and I was hearing, dun, 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 and he sang the whole verse and stopped. And my imagination kept going to the G. Da, 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 oh, that's it. We're good to you. So knock on the door and say, and then I you think c- I know the next part of that song. That's amazing. Yeah, that's you walked so right in and started doing it without even Yeah, But you matched it. Like that opening is so brilliant. It, it all, you always need that other thing and you got it. Yeah, the release, the B section. Release the beast and then it goes. B, B sections don't exist anymore. Have you noticed that in the, the radio? The Beatles called them middle eights. Is that what they are? Kind well, of? In, that's a Nashville thing, middle oh. eight. 
Okay. Yeah. And the B section eight is just bars. going someplace else for eight bars. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, that's the thing you were talking about, Lennon and McCartney. That yeah. answer to that question upstairs yes. was that I think McCartney brought the bridge to a lot of the songs where John would come in with a verse mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. And then you'll notice in the bridge, the bridge gets a little more chordy, a little more intellectual mm -hmm. and moves into a, a different kind of vibe. And then it comes, the classic example of that is Day in the Life. I woke up, got out of bed, got to go yeah, across. Yeah, was yeah. a piece of, that was a McCartney melody. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. we're, we, we, uh, what's the word? Well, Diverge. Or, well, well, no, no because that, you that were was... a part of a duo, incredibly successful duo, mm -hmm. which not important, but I saw it in 1977 or 78. I think it was Stanford University. It was like oh, a, a grass green, green thing. Mm -hmm. We were all huge fans. So it, just, just delve into that a little bit, how you, you hooked up with Jim Messina. Yeah, that was, I was looking for a producer. I wanted to be a solo artist. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I heard that Jimmy was producing acts. And what he'd done is he'd left Poco, which was a mm -hmm. band he'd started, to be a producer for Columbia Poco. Records. Poco. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Miller's favorite band. Back in Poco. What do you mean? Steppenwolf wasn't available or something? Mm. Poco <laughs> in there? Okay. Anyway, he, uh, <laughs> sorry. He's our favorite, to, one of our favorites to do. But so you met Jim, Jimmy, James, and- um, it Oh, just yeah. So I went over to his house. Mm -hmm. um, and I sang, you know, a bunch of songs that I had. Mo a lot of the songs that I played for. Oh, oh. oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh baby. no, no, I didn't Poco play, was big. For, actually, uh, um, the Dirt Band. Mm -hmm. And um, and in the process, you know, we we talked about working together. But I I found out when I was writing the book that Jimmy said in his interview, he wasn't that blown away. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he, didn't, he didn't want to do a folk act, and he saw me as a folk act. Is that, was that based on Danny's song or something? Or Probably. Yeah. I mean, that's Danny. just one, but you also got, yeah. you rocked it on as you, as you continued, right? Yeah. That, that was a conscious choice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and collaboration helps with that. You know, yeah. writing with Steer writers you. who already write in a particular style. Yeah. But what turned him? When did he kind of go, I'm going to work with you? Just called the next day? Well, or? no, Clive called him and said- Clive we, Davis. We, Clive. Clive Davis. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> thinking, no, no, not all. I've met, he was an impressive guy. Clive Wilkins? It's very yeah, smart. Right. Yeah. No, Clive, Clive Owens. Clive Owens? Okay, mm, gotcha. <laughs> Clive <laughs> for 10, Bob. <laughs> Kenny Loggins has the board. <laughs> um, okay, so so then he, he changes his mind. Yeah, well, Clive calls him and says, you know, you've been on salary for a year and you haven't done anything yet. So yeah. maybe you should pick one of these artists. And Clive had sent him Andy Williams and- uh, acts of that ilk mm -hmm. and that Slow was definitely pokes. not in his there was one act that he would have probably uh, produced instead of me and that was Dan Fogelberg oh, I but remember Fogelberg him. made yeah. one big mistake and he said I want to do an act just like Poco and Jimmy was like no uh, I don't want to do that but again wait a minute, so Jim, Jim Messina is in a room he's got an Andy Williams 8x10 <laughs> <laughs> and a Kenny Loggins 8x10. I'm not sure. Well, <laughs> let's go with the one, long hair guy. One's the future. You know, Andy Williams had a great run. Andy Williams, him. incredible it, voice. Uh, nothing against Andy Williams and his family. But and what's more exciting, and, you know, get but, a guy. Or Claudine. Or Claudine. <laughs> That's his wife? Or what? <laughs> Don't you remember that? Claudine Langer, that was the oh, invitational oh, ski oh, thing God. that the oh, SNL yeah. did. Yeah, that's a Dennis. Dana's no new. Was that Let's a Dennis? Let's go hit the slopes. There's something he would do a bit about. <laughs> that guy's Jesus. got an AK-47 going down the bunny hill. Let's talk about it. I, um, I, 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 have a, I have a, I'm going backtracking to Danny's song. We can song. bounce around. And don't, it, it'll yeah. be easy. Um, there's Eddie's song, too. Yeah, my big brother like, had ADD, so I can keep up with you. I do, too. Oh, there's a butterfly. I got to tie my shoe. What'd you say? So <laughs> this is Danny's song. is about your brother. But it was similar that my brother... Uh, Andy, my older brother, is very cool, and I went to high school with him, but he was always embarrassed to me. It sounded like you said something like that, where you were a little younger, and he yeah. told me I dressed uncool, and he would always go, "Don't they don't want people, <laughs> want you guys at the party, and I go, it's a party for freshmen. He's like, I know, but they don't want you there. And I go, I'm a freshman. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what you need, need is, is somebody who always thinks you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> to help you But maybe <laughs> help you I had grow. three of them that thought I was an idiot. Maybe that beating is, you know, uh, Dana is from, uh, his dad's from Montana. I think your dad might be from Montana. That explains and, a lot. And it was a, it was a, <laughs> his dad was very tough on him. He's like an old school dad. Mm -hmm. He had it in for me. And uh, wow. I don't know if you uh, had that similar situation. Just, just old school tough, I'd say that, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, my dad was tough till he left 
<laughs> um, and then and ran uh, off with yeah, my ran mom. Off. Have you considered therapy at all? Or <laughs> Dana's, would that, would that oh, fuck up your career? My favorite out? subject. <laughs> no, I got into therapy five years ago, and I I, I should have got it at age thirty. I learned a lot, but yeah. you might not have been who you were. Well, how would you just generally for you? Because I did read your book, but I thought you were going to say, "How would you describe me?" How would you? Yeah, enough about me. What do you think of me? What do you think? How of would me? you describe your childhood? Just a normal, uh, kind of weird, really fun, uh, you know, or See, all of the only takes one a big I breath, knew of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. How do I put this? Yeah, it did. Well, say, I was uh, third of three boys, youngest. I was the same fourth, here, and yeah. I was the youngest. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and my the middle brother Dan was mm -hmm. kind of the outsider. He was kind of the James Dean of the, the family. Rebel. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I tried to be like him. Mm -hmm. You had one of those, yeah. I think. And and it wasn't very easy to do because none of his clothes fit. Can't live up to him. Yeah. So you're trying to wear hand-me-downs? I, I even tried to you know, wear some hand-me-downs because they were cool, right? Yeah, he was cool. Whatever he wore was cool. Yeah. It didn't look the same on me. Such, such an illusion. Mm -hmm. And um, But that's what I was referring to in the back yeah. of the book, mm -hmm. was that in the process of trying to be like my brother, I realized, thanks to him, that everything about me was uncool and really stupid. So <laughs> you have to work at changing those things to become not so stupid and to try to be cool. Yeah. And so there's a process of creating a persona that, mm -hmm. that I carried into rock and roll because I thought if I'm gonna be on a camera, if I'm gonna be out in front of people, right. I better fix those things that don't seem to be working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you, got, you got pretty cool though. You. Uh, uh, you, obviously, um, at some point you realize, I, I don't know how you were in high school. I saw your high school senior, you know, but you, you became kind of movie star, good looking, yeah. right? And weren't you almost in A Star Is Born? Or is that oh, just that's, a rumor? That's a, that's crazy. a rumor. That's, that's a, rumor. a rumor? Yeah. Did that, you ever hold hands uh, with Barbara Streisand? <laughs> <laughs> no. I want to no, hold We sang girl. together, uh, though, which was yeah. pretty cool. And um, no, at one point she said, have you ever acted? Would you have any aspirations for acting? And I said, no. And that was that. It wasn't my thing. And that was that. So and that was my audition. I would say well, you were where, where did your, in it. you know, I, I'm fascinated by drive. And where did, where did you think yours came from? And when did you realize that you had it? You know, like you're willing to go through a lot of pain and keep writing songs and just the yeah. drive to get to where you got. When did you, were you like that and had to win at games as a kid and stuff like that? I was or, or all, always competitive yeah. in sports, but not at school. Mm -hmm. I mean, the school was sort of a side thing. For me, but you know, I think I think the drive came because I knew that I had some talent. I didn't know how good I was, but I knew right. I could pull off. You know, I could go to a party and sing songs, and there'd be people listening. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I didn't know mm -hmm. how far it could take me. But I knew that rock and roll is a high turnover business, and sooner or later, I'm going to get a shot at it, mm -hmm. and I better be good because I want to hang out there for a while. Yeah. And then one thing just led to another. I think the motivation when I got married and had kids was, you know, I got to bring in some money here. I got to support this family. And so I just mm -hmm. kept pushing, kept writing, kept recording. It's a tough did, life. Did you though. have bands in the 70s that were your peers? You, you'd listen to their album or watch where they got. Yeah, who did you? You know, you like James Taylor's got something. I, I want to beat that. Or just yeah. even as friends, did you, were you, did you have sort of. Seeger, anyone? Well, I, I think there is that. That friendly competition that yeah, happens. It's still friendly. With with other players, like other guitar players and sure. stuff. They they take their guitar to school. We'd sit around and trade tunes. And that's where you learn things, you know. Mm -hmm. When you're w working with your friends, it's mm -hmm. friendly enough that there's a, there's a one-upsmanship that usually happens. But also that you're paying attention to what they're doing. Because if somebody does something right. really good, you're going to go, God, I got to remember that. When, Makes you better. Or show me how you played that or... I remember the first time I was, I think I'd smoked marijuana. I was with a band in Tahoe. I think you still do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I did. I, well, we, we tried at the ranch and the house vibrated. Uh, we took an edible, my wife and I, only because we wanted to test drive it for her mother. Her, for her, her mother, of course. Yeah. You know, it was Irish. Yes. I'm not really sleeping well. Were you practicing well. for the police? No, we did, well, but we, then we didn't give it to her because the whole, the whole house was going like this, you know. But... Um, <laughs> Anyway, I digress. <laughs> I didn't yeah, know that really. story. You didn't Glad know that story? Yeah, 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 we just took a teeny bit. I didn't know. And then mm -hmm. we were watching The Godfather at Cottonmouth, and then I woke up mm -hmm. at 2 a.m. knock you out. And then the room was vibrating. It was, it, I, 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 I could like it. barely walk. I said, what? Yeah. It sounds so. like you took Indica. 
Jeez. Uh, oh, well, yeah, when's your, do you have a brand that, that you sell? You have the no, Kenny Loggins. No, I, don't. Dude, I, went in. I was thinking about. I was thinking Good Poo would make a good name for a brand. Good Poo. <laughs> yeah, I went into the, the stoner that. store and the guy's like, uh, "Hey, and the, and, you know, I'm like, I need a hey, weed why pen." You here, man? And he goes, "I go, my neck's always screwed up." He goes, "Hey, I go, which one?" He goes, "Which one of these six hundred do you like?" I go, man, "That's where you come in. I don't know." And then the owner comes out. He goes, "Hey, Spade, you know, Jimmy, let's get him some fentanyl crab cakes, and uh, you know what? Why don't you have some PCP <laughs> candy corns?" I'm like. No, no, no. I'm okay. I, well, I'm actually, insane. I'm actually just a new guy. <laughs> just want a weed pen, like a little Z quill. I just want knock out. But um, yeah. I have another question for Kenny. It's more of a statement, which okay. they all will be, and you don't have to talk. This will. This um, we're we're starting the part podcast pretty soon. Okay, let me know when we're on. <laughs> yeah, this is just, we call this the precursor. Yeah, this I, when I press this button, we're the first on. First hour. Go ahead, David. No, this might be a lie, but Kenny, um, I think I remember we did a corporate gig. Is it possible? Yeah. It's Do you possible. remember hmm. MCI? I was doing one eight hundred clack commercials. Beep boop ba beep boop. Remember that on the payphone boop, boop, during boop, SNL? Boop, boop, boop. And I was, I was sent to part of my get, my deal was to go to St. Thomas. And do a show, and I did stand up at the the pool. real St. Thomas or somewhere. I don't else? know. It was an island. <laughs> <laughs> There's an island, right? Uh, the I There's went a down saint there too, as far as I know. <laughs> and then I think it was you was uh, was the headliner, and I was just doing. But I did around a pool, which was a tough situation. They're scattered all around the pool. They didn't even cover it up. So I'm like on the diving board and they're around here. Anyway, oh, I do that. Yeah. And then so I So you're think, doing stand-up on the yes, diving board? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> That's really? dangerous. <laughs> they, were, they were working on a chart to see which way I could bomb the most. And they're like, I think the best way for him to not <laughs> right. do well is to put him on the diving board and he can That balance. keeps all the people apart. Yeah, and they're like Nadia Komenichi. I did a corporate in a hot tub and I was fully clothed. They said, get in the hot tub. <laughs> and there's like five CEOs. Five, I'm like, what's up? Five high rollers in there. Yeah, and they're, they're naked. I have a suit on. Yeah. Yeah. They so, took an edible on the whole hot tub. <laughs> Right. No, anyway. I yes. think Kenny was a headliner because I I swear this is true, but you wouldn't remember. But we, we, you know, a couple of us got to come back and say hi to you. Uh, but you were, it's not really a big story. It's just that it was you and you were coming on, but you obviously crushed. And uh, and I think I got to meet you and I think it was fun. How That's could all. I ever forget that? How could you forget? Check your diary. Um, <laughs> another thing, my buddy, this guy <laughs> that I did on the road had a, the greatest Footloose parody. Oh, we haven't talked about Footloose yet. Well, Do you let's... remember Footloose, the song? Well, basically, like you said in your book, you you had all these albums and all these hits, and then let's you went solo before yeah. you. Then all there's all these soundtracks that blew up and are still iconic. But yeah, you how, how you, you and Jim, you're still friends now. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Messina. We're doing a gig Thursday and another one Saturday. So I know, like I, I said, you're go. really good friends. <laughs> and, uh, we were going to wail on you for comps, man. And I can't, I'm going on the road. That's the only reason I'm here. Is I know, <laughs> well, I want to go because it's going to be so fucking I'm huge. a kick-a-day drummer. And I just wanted to be able to sit in on it. Do, do you eyes. still have your book for <laughs> your snare drum? No, oh, I yeah. graduated. No, I just, I just drum in my head all the time. The guitar players <laughs> play tennis rackets. He played with you too. <laughs> I'm always drumming. Sounds. Uh, uh, I played with you two fantastic. live from satellite. <laughs> I'm oh, yeah, pressing <laughs> live from satellite. Never Is Dennis done. Miller here? By the way, can we bring him in? Poco. Christ sakes, he's doing the whole uh, beatbox thing with his mouth, huh? To the <laughs> master of rhythm, Kenny. I have. <laughs> Has anyone ever called you Kenny G? No. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So you you leave Jim Not and that, till now. That was um, a big confidence. Gilbert boost. Godfrey didn't know who I was, and I was Is on that his true? show. He didn't. Is that true? <laughs> well, it was just a moment where he had to be reminded. Let me. You look familiar. <laughs> I really <laughs> sorry. <I'm> sorry, <laughs> but God rest his soul. Yeah, mm. it was great. Okay, so, so let's guys. go through some of these. Uh, well, one of the hits, "Don't Fight It." I, I just had questions because it was Steve Perry, and I don't. I, I remember that when I read it, and then I listened to it again. Of course, I, I know that song, and it's sort of you know, like whenever I call you friend, it's you and Stevie Nicks, which is mm -hmm. huge. One, by the way, one of the greatest intros of all time. Oh, thank you. I just heard it again. And I go, "This is what I love." You're screwing around at the beginning, and I think people get too perfect these days in songs, and they go, "Oh, we had a glitch. Let's redo it again." And you go, "No, it's funny to hear people talk in the background or." Do something odd because that's mm -hmm. what you remember it, how you memorize it. And I think the imperfections are really fun. And that was on purpose, obviously. Which imperfection what are you? What you did at the beginning, just screwing yeah. around before and We had the song recorded and then Bob James was producing it with me. And 
Bob says, we need an intro to this. And I said, it's, well, I'll just go out to the mic and, you know, just Was that just something. you? Yeah. yeah. That oh. thing? You remember that day in the beginning? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's totally. So I, I love cool. anything just, like that. Yeah, I was raised on the Beach Boys, and that whole counterpoint thing yep. was part of my brain. Genius. Well, Beach Boys just kind are... of just weave these things together. It's smart. And when we talked to McCartney, it was like, when do you know when it's done? Like, because, you know, the Beatles, they would, they would put another layer in another layer, and they finally go, that's enough. Yeah. But you go, when is enough? Because it feels perfect. Like, so much going on, especially a day in the life. There's yeah. It has change-ups and different things, and- that's why I know I can never write a song. It's too complicated. Well, you just keep plonking, you know, you're plonking. <laughs> John and I would face each other with the guitars. Mm -hmm. It was like looking in a mirror. And we just keep plonking away. Then we came up with Strawberry Fields, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I love <laughs> the <laughs> understand. I'm going to ask you a question. I, as such a great vocalist, because you are, you got the cans on and you're going to sing with Stevie Nicks. Must have been cool to hear your you sing with her. The, must have been the a, blend, yeah. Yeah, it must have been a thrill, right? Yeah. Because she has such a unique kind of tone. I mean, you know, we, we didn't perceive ourselves the way you're describing. Not mm -hmm. We were just working. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it wasn't Stevie Nicks. It right. was just Stevie. Oh, what year was it? Like 70s? So they uh, weren't? Uh, or early no, 80s. no, it was uh, late, late 70s, yeah. Late 70s. Right. So she wasn't quite, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Long as I'm Seen It broke up in 76, and so it was probably 78. And it is when songs are become remembered and stick out decades later, they, it just grows bigger. I mean, it's yeah. just- it's, Well, it gets legendary, you know, working with old old comedians or actors in old movies and people go, what was it like on this and this? And you go, wow, because in the yeah. beginning of the morning, you get up, you look at your lines, you go, let's get out there and you do it. And you, you're, and, you're just working. Yeah, and you go at the end, you go, I think that was all right. And then later, if it works, it works. I did it a thing doesn't. with, uh, I did a, a, a show for Coca-Cola's 100th birthday mm -hmm. with um, George Burns. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And he was 90 at the time. And at the end of the show, I said, in front of the audience, I said, George, this was so much fun. Let's get together and do it again when you turn 100. And he, <laughs> he takes a cigar out of his mouth. He says, well, you look like you're in good shape. You might make it. <laughs> <laughs> he ran into John Lovitz when he was like, I guess 98. And he goes, I got 18 months. <laughs> what? He's, he's got 18 months he left. He says, I got 18 months to live. to live. Yeah, he just kind of rounded it off, you know, but it was an incredible life. Do you remember the Norm yeah. MacDonald joke on Update when he goes, George Burns today died at 100. Which proves once again, smoking kills. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of those guys had double martinis and highballs oh, yeah. and cigars and just went on forever. Yeah. But are, when you're recording like that with someone like Steve, are you hard on yourself or are you kind of like, I think I got it? Or do you want another take? Or do you, you feel you, when you nailed it, you know it? Yeah. When you're in the zone. You, you can feel it. Zone? Do you feel bad if you <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> perfect segue. And we're not going to take it. Do you feel bad when you, you have Stevie Nicks in there and you go, close, <laughs> going again? Stevie Stevie did say in a number of interviews that I was the rough taskmaster. Oh, we wow. Had, I only had that one shot to get that vocal because mm -hmm. the Fleetwood was passing through and we recorded it in New York. Oh, and you got and like so we had one that session. One night. How does so, Kenny wow. Loggins- become a task man. But you're like, Stevie, what are you doing? I mean, what are you saying? <laughs> no, just, let's do it again. Let's, oh, let's just go again. Get it again. Go again. Or, the, or the, like in the movies, when you do a take, they go, perfect, going again. <laughs> you go, yeah. Well, no, I, loved it was perfect, I loved it. I loved it. You again. guys are great. We're just going to go. Well, Stevie, it would be hard. Not you know, doubling. I guess you weren't intimidated back then like everyone would be today with her. Just She's also just a stunner like in real life. I mean, there's so many, you're super talented, but do you you come in, you got a great. I think you agree. Okay. <laughs> so she's she's a uh, talented girl. She comes in, got a great voice. It matches up. Mm -hmm. And then you just cross your fingers and go, I hope this fits in the song because I don't want to waste her time. I don't waste her time. You know, you just yeah, cross your we, fingers, we, I guess. We didn't know um, much about what we were going to do. We had mm -hmm. to make it up as we went along. Mm -hmm. in the, the song studio. done? And in you the just studio? Told yeah. you, had to, you had to write in the studio? We had, because the vocals were crossing parts where- mm -hmm where it would be too high for her or it'd be too oh. too high for me. And so we'd have to switch p parts. So sometimes she's on the melody and sometimes yeah. I'm on the melody. And it, we had a harmony where the first two lines, I'm her harm, I'm harmonizing to her melody on yeah. the chorus. And then I switch yeah. over to melody and she t goes up above and does the harmony. I'm, I'm in awe of people who can harmonize. It seems like the toughest thing to hold a harmony. 
you know, all the I, way I think, through. you know, just... I, my big brother, again, Danny, mm -hmm. got me into music and singing when I was little. Mm -hmm. And so he had me learn all the harmony parts. And when I met Olivia Newton-John, she said, yeah, her big sister was the same way. Her big sister was the one who had all the melodies and she had to pull, sing all the harmonies. Unbelievable. Damn, Unbelievable. so you really started young. Yeah, you, you do. Well, you like the Beach Boys too, and they were all harmonies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was all about that. When you have, we have someone like Stevie Nicks or someone else, let's say Steve Perry in there, um, you're doing a song. Do, do they ever say, I want that line? No. I've had that. Yeah? I've had that in So where someone wants to take your punchline? Yeah. Yeah. Not it's, good. It's very weird. Yeah. And, uh, to take your I'll tell you later. <laughs> get lost. Uh, you know him. Uh, so uh, it is tough, but I guess it's whoever's doing it. Like when we were doing Grown Ups, applause. Um, yeah, thank you. We were, you know, million. there's five comedians there. So this, this isn't the example I'm talking about. But Adam was pretty cool about, you know, you have five comedians. And when you're, the scene is the scene and we all have a joke, but we're, all obviously capable of coming up with more jokes. So on every mm -hmm. take, Adam will go, Spade, do whatever you want in this one. And then rock. And then I'll come in, we'll huddle up after a take and might say, what about this line? And Adam will go, you know what? Uh, rock, you say that. And then uh, we'll say, I go, Adam, what? and he'll kick him around. So he was producing. He was producing. He's a producer. And then, and yeah. you have to have a boss and we have to go, okay, whatever Adam says. Now you do them all. Mm -hmm. And then when the movie comes out, he was pretty fair. You could have made that the Spade movie because every scene, I had a funny you had line. A, you had a line. But he goes, Rock's funny in that one. He's already had one. Give it to Kevin James here. He had a great line in that one. And I think even it out and doesn't hog them all for himself. He could have been every joke because mm -hmm. every time we, you know, everyone have something. Yeah. Uh, but I think but, that's I mean, good for How do you, is that intimidating for you? It, it, it was hard. with, you know, other four or five other yeah. big comedians. I think they comedians. make you get funnier, right? But it's work. It's the same thing <laughs> if, working. If there's it. a chemistry. Yeah, if there's a chemistry, you get. Yeah. Well, Saturday Night Live definitely made me go from being a not really good writer or maybe just a decent writer for my own standup. Mm. But Lauren said, I like that writing. We want it in here. And then I, you know, can you write for Dana, Mike Myers, whoever. Mm -hmm. And that was harder to write for other people, but it, it would make, seem liberating to it me. Makes it makes you better. Like just imagine anybody doing well, that. Well, it's a style that I can write for myself. And then I'd give it to someone. They go, ah, I think you can do it better. Or I think that's more your thing. Mm -hmm. which is a polite mm -hmm. way of saying it's not good. Or how would you good. do this? Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, I don't want to give line readings, but I go, oh, this. And I wind up, I wasn't as good writing for other people, but I think it made me better to go to a read-through and watch good writing and mm -hmm. watch people write. And you, like you're saying, yeah. you get around good people, it's it's the key to it success. It should be. Like, in, in, I did a... Um, Oh, it's good memory moment. Uh, documentary? Hopefully uh. you edit this. <laughs> the <laughs> wine ins, I did a Wine Inns TV show, mm -hmm. Wine and Family. Okay. And they did a moment where um, I think Michael was on, McDonald was on the show with me. Mm -hmm. And about six or seven really strong lead singers. And each one of us had a solo line that we would, that we would take. And then they would point, you take the solo Oh, wow. Line. So uh -huh. We're singing the song, learning yeah. the song, and then- jamming on what the solo line was and we are the world you did as we well. are the world was like that <laughs> did too. we are the world you asked for a different one yeah. <laughs> no, can i have four I lines i want cindy's line we are in the no, world goes, I don't don't like it. yeah did you go did someone go hey, hey cindy on this take ham it down <laughs> yeah right but, uh, is it you're trying it looks like it's it, to get it feels go to the youtube feel the competition Go to the YouTube moment where uh, they're trying to get Cindy's line over and over again. And, and look in the back on the stairs is Steve Perry. And he's making the funniest faces. It's like- uh, Oh, he's clowning her a little bit. Well, not clowning, especially. I think he's just grimacing because there were moments where, you know, okay. she would kind of miss he the note. Needed a little help. Well, was that a long, that was, must have been a long shoot, I heard, right? Oh, it went a long time. Yeah. Not just Cindy. I mean, the whole Everybody, thing. yeah. Just yeah. Who just was started. a real dick? <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone say- We want a trend. <laughs> they right. go, Spade needs a hard out in an hour. And everyone's like, what? Yeah, I'm what? You're right. But, uh, does anybody want to get out? I'm sure everyone wanted to get out of there. Dylan but... didn't want to do anything live yeah. with, the, with the people because he, he has his own thing and he doesn't want to have to sing in the group. So they brought him in separately to He sort of rocked lines. and swayed yeah. uh, to the song a little bit, but they didn't- he didn't really sing along with anybody. Amazing, you, didn't they show him in a wide well, shot? he's just not that kind of singer. He's Dylan. Sure. He's, you know. he's just Bob Dylan. So did, did you hear about um, Aerosmith? What's his name? Steve. Steve, Steve Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. When he sang the national anthem. Did you see that? Mm -mm. Was it recently? And and 
uh, a couple oh, okay. years ago, I think. And um, and he sings, Land on the Flag! Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, he gets all this criticism and he says, what'd you expect? I'm Stephen yeah, Tyler. Exactly. That's, that's, that's me, yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Why would yeah. you ask me if you didn't expect me to do that? I love, because that an early Bono was on We Are The World. Uh, he sounded cool from you two. And uh, Mike Jackson was He on. was? Bono was in there. He was? Wasn't he? Wasn't he? Okay, we got to Google this because I don't somebody think so. just because Maybe I've been Bono lying so much in this podcast. This I, can't, interesting. I can't afford one more. Um, I hope I'm not bugging you. I didn't no, mean to bug you. I like Michael. <laughs> I did a Michael Jackson video once. I think I told you Dana, and uh, he cut me out of it. Anyway, I sore knew subject. Michael Jackson in 1975. I was a busboy waiter bringing him his carrot sticks before the show <laughs> for a week. I knew all the family: Tito, Marlon, everybody. And Tito. I'm, Tito. Tito. And Michael was um, charming and I brought him carrots and Janet was 10 and she was dumping them down the bed. I said, please don't do that, Janet. She goes, Miss Jackson, if you please. That's if you're nasty. Joke. That's the joke part. Oh. I wanted to get into something we talked about earlier <laughs> is when you collaborate, you said that you're in a room collaborating and in the end of the day, no one really remembers who came up with what. Oh, right. Yeah. And you collaborate, your big collaborators like Michael McDonald, was he like your favorite? You did like seven songs with him or something? Yes, I guess five. Yeah. Maybe. But you guys kind of went back and forth. But that's kind of. Do you remember Michael That's McDonald? interesting that people don't yeah. know. Okay, we're going to start with the basics. Like when yeah. I came up with the Hollywood Minute for, for David. <laughs> <laughs> He's obviously being facetious. Um, I said, David, this is <laughs> so you. Something. You should have <laughs> You should this. do this. This is you. And he does actually, a great Bob, job with it. He Bob, did great. You know, I thought it was Odenkirk generous of you. That. Bob Odenkirk actually helped me. With Robert that. Odenkirk he from he Better Call Saul. He helped me come up with that. So what? I'll ask you these two questions. What was your... I probably don't have it. Your favorite collaboration or the collaboration that was better than you dreamed it would ever be um, turned out better mm. or someone who you enjoyed collaborating with, you you sought them out. Miss Piggy. Was did you do that? Oh, you did. Oh yeah, you were a I big- uh, one of those things, yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, I'm, the collab I but I didn't write with her. You didn't write with her. <laughs> yeah. Frank, she Frank does, Sinatra, did you ever seen you know, with Frank Sinatra? You know, um, I, I've always opted for the- um, Fred Astaire answer to that question, what which is, is that he he refused to ever say which was his favorite. Sure. Right. I get all it. my children Dancing are my favorite. I have, I have a good yeah. question yeah. for this guy. Um, okay. Steve, Kenny Loggins, Steve Perry. Uh, mm -hmm. Pipes what, Perry. The answer well, just is to, yes. Just to clear, <laughs> to clear the air because you're in the business. Kenny Loggins has the board. <laughs> Everyone loves Steve Perry. Everyone mm -hmm. loves Journey. And they- they went on without him. I don't know if it was a money thing or whatever, but everyone sort of was hoping he would come back and do it mm. with them. Mm. Was I, it his voice? Do you know I have the an answer? answer? Okay. Because our someone we know, our business manager, used to work with a lot of these acts. Mm -hmm. And so you had, I think it was the Commodores, but Lionel Richie wrote the song, so he had the publishing. So like he's got, he's going like, I think I'll go over here. He's got all the money. So apparently Steve Perry had all the publishing. And so he didn't want to tour anymore. Once you get a lot of money, you might want to tour a little bit, but not mm -hmm. a, th a three year sure. tour. So that was what I was told. Three was hour a driving, tour. a three hour tour. Sorry, you were, saw where it was going. <laughs> but when you got, when did you, what was your highest net worth? <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Perry, what happened? Why did Steve he stop? Steve Perry, he because he, he didn't want to go on the road like that. I, I, I really don't know. You okay. don't know? I don't know. I know that he had, personal issues his mother died at the time mm -hmm. and okay. that that kind of pulled him out of the band and that's well, what was term. steve per perry's net worth <laughs> <laughs> that's just, okay we'll we have do to some get... googling after the show okay. uh, obviously caddyshack was the first big sound i think the first big soundtrack song yeah, you did, i'm all right which is impossible to get yeah. three you have three that i know of uh yeah. three at least i know of um but caddyshack four Caddyshack, you don't, uh, like you said, you don't meet, you don't go on the set. People think you're hanging out and singing with the, with the cast. It, right. it happens later, right? Yeah. And they yeah. tell you what? Here's the movie. Do you see it first? Or here's well, the yeah, field of movie? I saw a screening. It didn't have an ending and it didn't have a gopher when I saw the screening. Wow. Yeah. The gopher wow. dancing to it was The dancing gopher, funny. right? And, and everybody loves the gopher. But yeah. when John Peters made the movie and John said, okay, so this next part, man, this is where we have a gopher come out of a golf hole and dance. It's a hand puppet. And I went, that's stupid. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's stupid. Yourself, You're going to make that of course. work. <laughs> it sounds like, horrible. I was so wrong. I mean, it does sound horrible. It if sounds you came dumb, up with yeah. that, they'd throw it out, right? Yeah, exactly. Let's do a, but, well, how about a puppet over here then? And Bill Murray's going to talk to <laughs> yeah. the puppet, yeah. Well, I have lamp chop with me. Right. 
But Lamb Chop was a star. I mean, you bring Lamb Chop in, I understand. <laughs> he made the big oh, money. So Sharon you bring Lewis some nobody Chop, squirrel. That was a big you should part. check his net worth. Big so, part. So this, yeah, net worth. <laughs> so uh, you you write 000. it to the you write it to the uh, imaginary. You just, you just you know, wrote yeah, the song yeah, and they adapted. Yeah, it, I wrote right? I wrote a couple of songs for that. The opening the opening song where Danny, the lead character, is riding his bicycle through suburbia, mm -hmm. and um, and the temp music, temporary music that they had for that spot was a Bob Dylan song, and I thought this is really strange. I mean, why would they be playing a Bob Dylan song, mm -hmm. showing a kid riding his bicycle? Mm -hmm. That nothing is happening here, mm -hmm. and and then I I figured. That, you know, Dylan is like the ultimate rebel. So why is that going on? What are they trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the movie, you see Danny changes his, his character from wanting to be a part of the country club to wanting to go his own way. Mm -hmm. So he does become the rebel. So that's where I'm all right. Nobody worry about me came from. Wow. I didn't even put that together. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. And, so uh, just music you know, they had no ending out. though. And so you were talking about giving a line away. Yeah. They just, they brought Rodney back out onto the golf course. Rodney Dangerfield. I tell you, get no respect. And it, and they said, "Give us an ending." And this was uh, um, who 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 wrote that? Um, you would know that. Who wrote Caddyshack? Yeah. The, was it Harold uh, Ramis? Uh, Harold Ramis. Yeah, or Ramis. Dan Aykroyd, or? It was Ramis. Yeah. Okay. And the great writing and a lot of improvising. Yeah. yeah. And. And so Rodney just goes out and goes, hey, we're all going to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> that Great was the, writing. That was <laughs> the mic drop. <laughs> Great. It works. And then everyone starts dancing and they dance. I'm all right, is it? Uh, I guess. Yeah. yeah that probably. worked. Yeah. Okay. So that one. <clears throat> that one was Obviously great. a hit. You've got. Um, oh, Top Gun is huge. We, you had Heart to Heart, obviously. Heart to Heart. This I love. It. I heard it this morning. Heart to Heart. Another with Michael McDonald? Or? Yeah. Yeah. It was that's another Michael and David Foster. No. Remember that? Yeah, I've met David Foster a few yeah. times. Yeah, he's, he's great writer. He's great, right? Yeah. My, David and I wrote the chorus in New York. Mm. And then when we had that chorus in the bag, I said, I want to hold the rest of the song for Michael because it uh, feels like a Mike McDonald yeah, song to me. And he was so, on piano and you were on guitar when you wrote the chorus or? David David was, yeah, and, on, on, on yeah, grand were, piano. Were you playing an instrument then, or just like guiding him? Usually I don't pick up a guitar yeah. unless I need to find an idea so yeah but yeah. because you know the chordal thing the whole piano thing is so much more fluid yeah chordally places so when you I collaborate and they're playing you're you're going that that yeah how about over oh, here no no not that one the, this it. one put yeah. that in the yeah. bass yeah you know? and so then i went to encino to michael's house and i played the chorus for him and i said let's write a verse and so he just said do 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 he came up with that in about five minutes he said that's it let's do that yeah <laughs> and did you, you wow. I think you said in the book, you, uh, you, you had David Foster and you had him and you, you had to pick. You know, we went in, we went into the studio and because I'd promised that I would never record a song I wrote with Michael without Michael on the piano, because mm -hmm. he's a unique player. Um, we put David in one room on the uh, grand piano and Michael was in the main huh. room on the Fender Rhodes. Hmm. So Michael would play the verses, okay. and then he would lay out, and David would ah. jump in on the choruses. And so. it's Michael. When you say unique style, is it is it kind of rudimentary intentionally, or or how would you describe how? Because it is sort of it's rhythmic. You mean the way he plays, the way he plays piano. Michael plays with his his hands apart, and and his bass line is moving all the time. And David plays like thumb to thumb, so he be there's these big clustery chords that are real lush and more R and B kind of vibe. Oh, yeah, so like there's that. a wider range in the chords. It's Michael. just a different style. Yeah, different, Michael's more like that sound. stride gospel Interesting. style. Interesting. Okay. So what about Footloose? How, how'd you come up with that? Did I skip one? I mean, skip Top is, Gun. Foot, no, but Footloose is before Top Gun or they're yeah, right around no, the Footloose time. is before Top okay, Gun. Okay, Dave. That was uh, a friend of mine, <laughs> Dean Pitchford, wrote the screenplay. Yeah. And he asked if he could write some songs with me to make sure that he got the deal with Paramount to also be a songwriter because mm -hmm. they only saw him as a screenwriter. Ah. So as a favor to Dean, we wrote a couple of songs, one of which was Footloose, one of which was I'm Free. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it turned out to be a favor to me. And you, mm -hmm. at that point, had transitioned into electric and you were into the Fender because you have that dong, ding, dong, ding, dong, yeah. ding, dong. Yeah, that, that, that kind of started. Well, 
I, I came up with that idea backstage, so it was sort of warming up on that. But oh, that no, y- no, I, no. I wrote it on acoustic guitar, but I knew that it was going to be electric yeah. guitar part. And do you it's think, like a Dwayne Eddy. Do you think Kevin Bank, Bacon's danced to it well, or how'd you feel his dancing was? <laughs> I think I think, <laughs> I think Kevin and all the people that danced to that uh, pretty amazing. And uh, yeah. you know, if you look at the video, that's not Kevin entirely, right? There's, there's the, all the flips well, and the twirls and everything. Well, sure, most, yeah. most of that Dana, is. Dana's going to totally. start crying. Dana. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe you, Mr. Hoggins. <laughs> is Kevin Bacon can dance any way he wants? <laughs> yeah. Should we just touch on SNL for a second? No. What that? No. <laughs> no, because Please, I, I want to tell him is the uh, parody of Footloose that he's heard a million. Oh, of. okay. Yeah. But Stand who is the me. guy? This is the one I heard. And just bear with me and we'll cut it later. It was been sleeping all night, worked up an appetite. I'm lying on my head it's like a weird owl mom Yankovic. says get out of bed i yeah. see the two can he says to follow his nose run fast as you can follow wherever he goes because i gotta eat loops fruit loops one of well, the four food groups funny. milk please louise eat the whole box with ease funny <laughs> heart attack need a snack my vitamins and minerals i lack I <laughs> lack. Wow, it's yeah. funny. Yeah, I, don't know I can't believe you got that. The guy that, that oh, the guy went on before me that and killed. He just put the guitar down and left, and I didn't even go on stage. I, Fruit go, loops. I can't follow that shit. Fruit loops. It's got I a good gotta hook. have loops. Fruit <laughs> loops. <laughs> One Fruit of the four loops. food groups. Kick anyway, out your yeah. Okay, like so that's that. a hit, and in was song parodied, uh, and that was a good one. Okay, that so was- Kenneth. Before we <laughs> talk about me, the Kenster, the log, the loginator, the loginator. That's not bad. Long I was going to ask you good. just quickly what it meant to you in 1982, if Wikipedia was right, to go on Saturday Night Live as a musical guest. Was it a? It was it. It's, it was nerve wracking or uh, both. Yes, yeah. it's very exciting. You have you have you hope you're ready, and but because it, it's live, you know, right, yeah. and and the sound is really difficult to make you, it right yeah. on. Oh, a TV you must studio. go in there and tweak Thursday and get scared. To I had a, my own engineer to be in the room and make sure it approximated the record. Do you remember what song? I, yeah, had well, a, I, did a, I did the show a couple times. Oh, you okay. did? Yeah. I had one time was Heart to Heart, and I'm pretty sure I did Footloose. Okay. Oh, okay. How but fun. I did the other one that was way better was Fridays, I think that was called. Fridays. God damn oh, it. Don't you dare. Was our don't you dare. Right, for How about dare a year, you, Mr. Two Lawrence. Years. Good right. day to you. So. Don't tell Lauren. <laughs> I'm sorry. I turned British first. Now- uh, does it bump the record? That's the idea, right? It bumps the sound. Well, hopefully, yeah. yeah. That it's just to, to keep the record moving up. And also, did, it looks cool. Yeah. But it was a status thing. Yeah, it you looks know, really doing cool. Saturday for Night sure. Live was always a status gig. 100%. And if you, you feel for your, if you look back on it, do you feel like you you did great each time? Or were you coming off going, ah, but did you no, like I you felt, killed it? No, I felt good about it. Good. Yeah. yeah. And did Lauren say anything to you? The Lauren Teddy. Michaels, our boss? I don't think so. Because he'd be very understanding. I think he was busy. Maybe he would levitate loose. the room. He'd say, oh, it's a nice job. I thought it was breathtaking. No, he anyway. <laughs> um, okay, well, we touched on SNL. <laughs> right, we did it. And, <laughs> That's uh, what the show's about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, it's too fun to talk about this other stuff. And uh book is obviously still all right by Kenny Loggins. Uh, but lastly, we'll talk about um, Danger Zone because- uh, it was obviously a um, Danger Zone. Yeah, Could I don't you know still that, sing that in concert? Oh yeah. And how is that an easy one relative because it's kind of raw or, or you don't have to reach for the high notes as much? Well, there are high notes oh, in that. Okay. You know, yeah, but, Dana, but, he's a rookie. So yeah, how actually, dangerous is the zone? It's just a question. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote that down, did you? There's <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of, little bit of country. Yeah, he wrote no, it down. I didn't, he's been sitting on it all That's night. not an ad lib. <laughs> <laughs> I, I let the uh, judge and the jury decide. But um, have you so, heard the song? I've been to the Fruit Loop Zone. <laughs> Fruit Loop. Now I'm going to be singing that all day. Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops. loops. Fruit Fruit loops. loops. Okay, so, how did that song come about? You got contacted by Jerry Bruckheimer, or oh, did you record okay, company? So yeah, that was uh, contacted by Jerry Bruckheimer yeah. um, to see a screening. Mm-hmm. But I think it was a cattle call. They, they did a bunch of screenings <laughs> for it. a lot of artists to come in, and I was sitting there. I was making oh, a record really? with the producer. An Aust- Austrian producer mm-hmm. named named Peter Wolf. Yeah, we do the yeah. music. And then <laughs> Kelly yeah, Loggins comes in late. and he does the music for the people. Yeah. That's, Sorry, God, that sounded nothing like. It's going to be a big <laughs> smash. It's amazing. Oh man, I'm so over two here. Yeah, what are you talking right. about? Chris, thanks, Kermit. Yeah, I got no respect quiet. around you. Um, so then, then you. So, so we I say went cattle to the, call. I'm you know who else? Pick up where I left off here. Well, I went in for the cattle call and and saw the movie, and there was about. Six other acts in the theater. You won't and say who they are. I knew everybody. I don't remember. But wow. Aerosmith. 
It was not there. Oh. And <laughs> that I thought the opening scene with the jets and everything, I figured, forget about it. Everybody's going to write for that. And they got to the, the middle it. scene and the, uh, the volleyball scene. Right. And I turned to Peter and I said, nobody's going to write for this. We got to write this one. Because yeah. then, <laughs> then, you, then you're on the album, right? And yeah. then you're one of 10 or 12 songs that can be chosen for a single. That's clever. But Kenny, do you write, I, that's so interesting. You write for a scene because they have to put music throughout the movie. So yeah. they're so trying I, to vie for the first scene. I knew that scene that was, was going to need music. And okay. so that's what I went well, for. It. So I got playing with the boys in. And then while I was recording that, I got a call from Maroder and his office. They said, you know, we have a song. We got a dub in Friday and we don't have a singer for it because I guess the lawyers blew it. And that was Danger Zone. That was Danger Zone. So, hmm. so I went, I listened to it. I made some changes and then made some changes and then went into Did the Did they give you a writer's studio. credit? Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Writing credits are tough. This is actually, I don't think I put this in the book. All right. That, that um, Giorgio and Whitlock, his co-writer, they were trying for an Academy Award for their, for their music in the movie. Mm -hmm. But if they had, it had to be the same two writers. Ooh. So they couldn't add me as a writer because that ah. would that would be one of the songs they needed to get that Academy Award nomination. Four, right? It, it is in I your I thought book, it was thought. five, but okay. Okay. you know, you know better book. than me because you're a big movie star. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I read the book. It is in the book. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's say yeah. it's four or five. And then, uh, and, um, you so you do wind up with it or you don't get it? Well, I, I said, okay, then just give me a piece of the publishing instead of writers. So we you know, financially Ooh, we can work it out that way. Smart. But then when he sold his publishing company, something got lost in the shuffle. Oh and my wow. name was dropped off the record for no. about actually more like ten years. Uh so nothing it, came in just from the publishing on that part. And then, and then it started nobody, again. nobody was watching the door, right? So yeah. I didn't get paid for at least oh. 10 years, maybe 12. But then you got a credit later? They we, we had to straighten it out and okay. go through all that stuff. But that's always, but so my name was not on as writer for years. Does that eat at you a little bit? The missing money was what ate at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, also that someone would drop the ball like that and, yeah, and no one like, gave a shit. No, no yeah. one's watching the hen house. And you, mm. and then when Danger Zone comes back again on the new topic, I don't know if you've seen it, Dana, but it's a big hit right that's now. That's like a, a an amazing worldwide smash. And here you are again, front and center. Yeah. And just as a fan, when I watched the movie and then I heard that again, I was like, oh, I was just completely... Elevated. It brings everybody right back to that moment yeah, yeah. 35 years ago. Yeah. But it was like- When you guys were just, you know, like what, five? Oh, I was so young. Dan Thank was you, about Kenny. Uh, I want to meet your dermatologist, but we'll talk <laughs> after. Kenny's looking good. Yeah, you're uh, looking good. And all right, let's, we should let Kenny go. I think we covered everything SNL we could. Well, I, I just want to know how you, this resurgence, what, what, what has it meant, if anything, just that you're front and center right now in the culture- with Danger Zone, do the people go more crazy when you play it? Like, absolutely. It's, yeah. So it's that's yeah. just kind of cool, right? It's so, back in the last. You know, uh, Tommy Dowd, I worked with on a, on a record. He produced uh, Derek and the Dominoes and a few things like that. Oh yeah. And Tommy said, "Success is like a moving train, and for a, a minute you're in the window and people can see you, yeah. and then the train moves on." And so my train is like a, a Lionel circle. You know, Sorry, it just keeps remember. coming yeah. around because now this. Danger Zone's back in the window and it's cool again. Yeah. Footloose went through a period of time where it was just not cool. Because yeah, it but back. it's Disco such a toe tapper. Took the groove when over. you, if, yeah. if and when I go to your concert, which I want to because it's great, uh, you're the kind that if if I brought a friend that wasn't as 100% familiar, every other song they'd be like, oh, he does this one? No, he did that oh, one. He wrote there's down. so yeah. many hits. I don't yeah. think it's you, 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 it's, you can suffer from too many hits. Yeah. Where people go, oh, no, he also did that yeah. and yeah. that. But then, it, you know, with music, you have the young people keep discovering it. Yeah. And it's kind of hip. My kids love stuff from the 80s and 90s. Well, you yeah. can see that the whole yacht rock thing is really big. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about audience. that briefly. Yacht rock. How, yeah. do you, how do you define that? Well, I don't. Oh, <laughs> but but coined... actually, there was a period of time, I will, a period of time where uh, smooth jazz was influencing pop music. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us were leaning in that sort of Stevie Wonder kind of vibe and trying to get things that were a little funkier, a little, mm -hmm. you know, more of a jazz groove. And I was working with a lot of the New York guys like David Sanborn and mm -hmm. Eric Gale and Steve Gadd and people like that. 
So, you know, like Heart to Heart is a good example of that kind of jazz, smooth jazz smooth jazz vibe. and pop rock. Yeah, a lot of saxophones in mm -hmm. that era. Yeah. And so I think that, that the yacht rock thing was kind of partly defined by the guys that created the, the internet comedy bit on yacht rock. So it was like yeah. wealthy men on their boats. I, I'm never sure about either. that. That's it, one of the things I hear is like, it's oh. is it music you listen to on your yacht, or is it if you, you own, own a yacht, yeah. do you do you it listen? Might be to, just more oh, okay, of a concept of just yeah. like it sounds cool, it sounds fun, and it sounds like yeah, it, old school hits that maybe middle aged guys are cranking, which I'm fine with. Yeah, well, yeah, they all they one. all work. Yeah, yeah Dana's uh, one. I'm like a young. A young Ingenue. version of that. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I am his father. We haven't never announced it, but I, I, I am dead. your father. I am your father. I think they're allowed to laugh back here. They've been either they're I holding it in or nothing's Luke. been funny yet. Uh, <laughs> well, so we anyway, haven't really started the show yet. No, we got the book push is, the still right. is still all right. The guest right. is the great Kenny Loggins, who just keeps. Uh, I prefer what? Kenny Loggins, the great. Just Kenny yeah. Loggins, the great. <laughs> and wait, there's more. <laughs> he keeps coming at us yeah. in society and now Danger Zone and Top Gun and all that uh, super hit. And we just thank you yeah, for coming on you. our humble show. I, I appreciate it. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad you I, when I heard you had one, I, like, these kids are good. They're going to be stick with it. I love being it. called a kid. Can I hang out <laughs> with you more? <laughs> <laughs> if they stick with it, you know, they they just might make it. Well, thanks because uh, if, you, if you get a chance to see him in concert, he's, uh, it's all, it, just great. I would love it. And uh, I'm going to look at your tour list and just show up backstage one just of those days. anytime yeah, yeah. work up um, any I, song you like uh, I'll you know. do Chopping Broccoli it's a thing I did on SNL if you got yeah. a piano it's a broccoli Chopping Broccoli might go. be a good yeah. collab that should be a good we'll we'll take an intermission that night <laughs> <laughs> and you can just sell step merch. there you <laughs> sell merch we'll sell while merch while you yeah. the whole play. crowd leaves <laughs> you can be the opening act <laughs> alright well, thank you Kenny and thank, thank you, you Dana Kenny. and uh, David once again see you next time thank you both this has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 